So, so amazing, right? I mean, we've seen such a collapse from the 65 ish thousand when I, when I, we were doing that live interview in Dubai, which was just awesome. I still remember I was, I was the loneliest man in the room. No one really wanted to talk to me too much there. I kind of had to stand in the corner because I was the only one that was bearish. Um, but, but again, price is always king. Charts are always truth versus emotion. And I think we always have to remember that whether you're a bull or a bear, price and price charts are what's going to give you the clearest signal. So we saw the break of 20,000 just this past, you know, really this past weekend. And the key here is to understand why it broke 20,000, because there were a lot of people saying, hey, 20,000 is the low, you know, and by the way, they all came on once we got to like 30, they all piled on the bandwagon. But the bottom line is when you have everyone calling for a low of 20, you have a lot of people putting stops just under 20. And it's the tendency of a market to run those stops, make people freak out, make the weak hands exit, and then you finally get a short-term bottom. And I think that's what we have here on Bitcoin. Is this bounce gonna take, or how long is it gonna take to get to 25K, you think? So I think it'll be faster. I think I think as we get and stay above 20,000, a lot more people are gonna start to say, hey, we have a major low in Bitcoin, and you're gonna see, see the bulls come back with a vengeance, trying to say, okay, now we're gonna start heading back up to all-time highs. I think that'll propel it over the next probably three to six weeks back to 25 to 30,000, um, which again, from 17,000 is a low, or 17,500, percentage-wise, that's massive. Now, if you're in from 60 or 65, that doesn't seem such a good bounce. But again, in percentage terms, that's a major, major move. Now, once we get there, unfortunately, I still see more downside. I still think that we will likely head down to probably about 12,000, which is my second price target on the downside. 12,000 is your second price target on the downside. Well, that answered a lot of the viewers' questions already, Gareth, yeah. but I'm gonna come back to your upside target for a minute. I'm curious as to why you stopped at 30,000. Why not 100,000 or 150? Why not <laughs> give a multi, you know, a, a long-term bull cycle high? So, so I think it's important to recognize that I remain a long-term bull on Bitcoin. In fact, when we broke 20,000 at 19, I announced that I started my beginning HODL position. And so ever since we were at 65,000, even though I was bearish, I was always saying, hey, listen, long-term, I think there's a huge place in economy in the world for Bitcoin. And I think we'll get there. We'll get to 100,000, 500, maybe a million dollars. It's just, you have to flush out all the weak nonsense. I think last time we talked, we talked about that Darwinian concept of only the strongest will survive and you just have so much crap in the system frankly right so the idea here is that in the near term a bounce back to 25 or 30 the reason 25 is a key level is that is your low from the the terra luna collapse so that is going to be re, uh, resistance and then if you go up there was a ton of consolidation for about a month that occurred just around 30,000, and that is going to be major resistance. So it's hard for me to imagine with the NASDAQ, even though I expect bounces there, I still think the NASDAQ's headed a lot lower, at least to the COVID highs, that the Bitcoin market would bottom just yet fully. So I still think we need to wash out more of the weak-handed Bitcoin, the cryptos, and that will finally give us later this year a big point bottom. All right, Crypto Crazy asks, where does he see Bitcoin two to three years out from here? Yeah, two to three three years out, I think we're, we're back to 65. So I do think there's a decent chance that we're back to 65 within two or three years. I think this next six months or so is gonna be the hardest, then we'll bottom out, and then you'll probably have another six months of sideways chop. If we look at past cycles on Bitcoin, it's usually that first year down, and then you get a sideways kind of choppy where the bulls and the bears are just battling it out for a period of time, and then finally you start to get that move up. And I'm still a believer that inflation is gonna be a systemic problem, maybe not at eight or 9%, but at 5%. And I still believe that when the economy really tumbles here, and I start, I'm starting to see the, the signals of that, that eventually the Fed will say, okay, we have 5% or 4% inflation, but we have 10% unemployment. We now need to print again, which is going to be another positive for Bitcoin. So again, there longer term, lots of positives for Bitcoin. I don't think it's going away. I don't think it's going to zero ever, but ultimately you just have to weather the storm essentially. Well, you're assuming that by then, if the Federal Reserve becomes accommodative again, that Bitcoin will still be correlated to macroeconomic uh, forces and be correlated to the stock markets overall. It's possible at some point in Bitcoin's future that it will start trading independent of all other variables and basically be a diversifier asset, right? I yes, mean, it's just and, possible. And I 
And I do believe that that will eventually happen. But the thesis that I have for the Fed being accommodative again is that the economy is going to get so bad that they're forced to, which may not necessarily make for a new massive bull run in stocks. Like, I don't think the S&P or the NASDAQ are going to hit new all-time highs for years. I think we could be in a scenario like the NASDAQ was in 2000, where when you finally dumped out, it took about 15 years to make new all-time highs. But I think Bitcoin will get there a lot sooner because it's not an economic play, right? So if the economy is suffering, if you have this systemic kind of bear market longer period, that's bad for stocks. But Bitcoin, because the printing presses will start up again, that would be ultimately a bullish scenario for Bitcoin. Okay. 